All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Plant Based Skinny Health. Michelle Krosmer and Dr. Hashmi here. And the question for today, Dr. Hashmi, is can someone with kidney disease take metformin? And does it damage the kidneys? Can it cause kidney disease to progress more quickly? You know, it's interesting. If, if metformin was a person, that person would just feel terrible every single day because there's been more negative things said about metformin <laughs> than just about any other drug. And, you know, metformin is actually quite a really nice person and a drug, of course. So let's talk a little bit about the background of metformin and then I'll answer your question. You know, metformin, contrary to popular belief, it actually doesn't lower your sugars. So when, when even doctors do this all the time, they say you're going to get hypoglycemic on metformin, you're not. What metformin is really going to do is it's going to decrease the amount of sugar that's coming out of your liver. That's the real thing that it's going to do. The second thing it's going to do is it's going to make the sugar that's floating around in your bloodstream. It will help the liver and the muscles to utilize that sugar that's going on. And then the third thing that it's going to end up doing is, is it actually helps for lowering your appetite going on. And in some studies, we see weight loss from 4 to 7%. In fact, in my own clinical practice where I do nephrology and I do obesity medicine, every single one of our patients that comes to see me for obesity gets started on, met on metformin regardless of whether they are pre-diabetic or not because of the fact that it has appetite suppressing effects. Now, a lot of patients that come to me, they always say, well, I want something natural. I don't want to, you know, use a drug. That's fine. But what you don't understand is, is that metformin actually comes from a flower. It actually comes from the French lilac going on. And what's really interesting is, is originally what metformin was used for, well, the, not metformin, the plant, the plant, the French lilacs, is Galega officinalis, was used for was they, they would feed the plant to goats to improve milk production going on. And it wasn't until 1920 that the researchers or scientists were able to isolate the compound from the plant, which they called guanidine. And guanidine, because when you took it orally, it was really hard on the body. It was very hard to tolerate. So by essentially making it into a biguanide or two guanidines, they were able to make it more tolerable. So 1958 is when metformin gets first released for lowering blood sugars. And in the U.S., it was 1995 where glucophage was released. And the reason they call it glucophage is gluco for glucose, phage for eater. So it's a glucose eater going on. And then the last thing of metformin that's really interesting to understand is metformin is also linked to slowing down aging. It's linked to preventing age-related diseases. There's some evidence that is also linked to increasing longevity or lifespan. And the potential mechanisms now, there are several, but the potential mechanisms are maybe it's because it's an antioxidant, maybe it's because it improves your blood vessel health going on, or maybe it's because it just makes insulin work better so the damaging effects of insulin, having too much insulin floating around in the body does not occur. Now, keep in mind, a lot of these studies were done in diabetics. So it's still controversial where we don't know in healthy people if metformin would truly be the fountain of youth or not. There are studies, as always, we just don't know. Now, back to your question. The most important thing to understand about metformin is, number one, it does not damage and it does not exacerbate kidney disease going on. You have to know this. Number two, if you put off taking metformin and you are a diabetic, you are almost ensuring that that sugar level, whether you're pre-diabetic or a diabetic, is going to end up damaging your kidneys and you will go on to develop kidney disease. Remember, much easier to prevent kidney disease than it is to treat kidney disease going on. The other thing is, is there's some really well-designed study. One of them was in diabetes care in 2020. That was Quan and colleagues where they showed that metformin used in patients with GFR greater than 30 actually lowered all-cause mortality and lowered the risk of going on to dialysis. Meaning not only does not, not only does metformin not cause worsening kidney damage, but may, it may actually reduce the risk of going on to dialysis. And the reason why they looked at the study with a GFR 
over 30 is because we don't use it in patients with a GFR less than 30 because there's a risk of lactic acidosis, extremely small risk. In my career now spanning two decades, I've seen maybe three or four cases. All of those cases were due to some other cause. So if you asked me and said, was it metformin? I would still tell you the answer is no. So there you have it. Metformin overall, I think it really gets a bad rap. And overall, it actually can be a really helpful medication. Thanks for clearing that up. And that was actually a question that someone left in our comments specifically. They were like, is high, is diabetes and high blood sugar causing kidney disease to progress or is it the metformin that they, you know, are prescribed? So I think that's helpful to hear about that, the benefits of it. And then the difference there with GFR less than 30, that's usually I think why people will hear, you know, oh, don't take it with kidney disease because their doctors take them off it if their GFR um, is less than 30 and they have severe kidney disease. Um, but again, with everything, make sure you're talking about your medications with your physician and your healthcare team, and we'll see you guys next time. Thanks, everyone.